Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I want to explore a few ways of creating texture uh, for abstract watercolour landscape painting. And what we discover and explore in this more abstract way can of course be applied to more realistic or figurative painting as well. So why do we need texture in our paintings? Well, in, in my view, I think having different textures and weights of line, mark and wash in your watercolour paintings, whether they're abstract or realistic, will add to the interest in them and create something that's got um, more sort of a visual appeal um, for a viewer than something that's just um, very flat with little variation in the textural quality of what you put onto the page. So to explore texture today, I shall be using some fairly strong colours, Prussian blue, Payne's grey, indigo and burnt sienna. I'll use a palette knife and a couple of um, large flat mottler wash brushes. Any wash brushes will do, but if you're going to experiment in this way, using a big brush um, will give you a sort of more spontaneous, more interesting and more expressive effects. I'm going to be using a couple of sheets of Milford cold pressed 100% cotton watercolour paper, 15 inches by 11 inches or 38 centimetres by 28 centimetres. Um, I've got it at an angle of about 20 degrees. I've taped it to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and I've divided it roughly into 12 with washi tape, which is a low tack craft tape. And the idea here is to take an experimental approach, not looking for a finished painting, but just looking to let the water, the paint and gravity marry and mingle and see what effects and textures we can create. So taking all the pressure off ourselves and just having fun. I'm so excited with some of these effects. There's some wonderfully spontaneous marks and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens when it dries. So on to the next experiment. This time I've divided this, the paper up into six longer sort of panorama sections. And let's play in the same way and see what happens. But this time I'm going to add a little bit of palette knife scraping into the equation and see how that affects the overall texture of these experimental pieces.
and just very gently dabbing out with a tissue any areas where the paint and water is sort of pooling up at the bottom of the tape. I'm leaving it in some areas because I like how it's sort of running back into the other areas of paint and giving us some really lovely textures. So now I need to leave this all to dry. And again, another really exciting piece. Um, the magic will happen when we remove the tape, but once it's completely dry. So I'm going to set it aside and I'll come back and we'll have a look and see how these experiments look when they've dried completely. So here's the first one and it's quite interesting Prussian blue always dries back a lot lighter so that's one of the reasons I use the Payne's grey so we can keep a nice um, sense of, of deep tones in these experiments which will add to the effects of the texture. So I'm going to be pulling off the washi tape and I find this the really interesting part because those clean white borders straight away um, sort of isolates, has the effect of isolating each one of these little squares as a completely separate study. And we can look at each of these squares and have a look and see how the paint has married and mingled, how it's mixed and blended on the page, how it's resisted any patches of dry paper and flowed into the wet paper. Also, there's some lovely little blooms and blossoms where I flicked water into the wet paint. So if we have a closer look, I'll sort of try and move it around so you can see some of the textures on this paper. That little blossom there uh, and there. I mean, you don't want blooms and cauliflowers if you're trying to paint a completely clean, flat wash. But if you're looking for interesting effects and textures, then these marks are your friends. Um, and so is any dry brush that you can get onto the dry paper um, and these deep contrasts where it's really pale against really dark. And I'm really excited with this experiment. So let's move on to the second one and let's have a look and see what this sort of larger format's given us. And this one being sort of more heavily Payne's grey than Prussian blue. And of course, we scratched in extra texture here with a palette knife. And as soon as those white borders are revealed, we get far more separation between each of these small studies. And we can see each one almost as an abstract painting in its own right. And there's so much potential here to be explored and taken further into larger abstract paintings, but also into um, more realistic loose watercolours where we want to say paint stormy skies or mist or mountain textures, that sort of thing. So let's take a closer look at some of these textures. Um, you can see where the palette knife has scraped through the paint. In some places, it stayed as a nice sharp mark. In other areas, it sort of softened and the wet paint has run back into the mark to a certain extent. So I shall wait for these to fully dry because I think they're still a little bit damp in places. And then I shall cut them all up and go through them and decide which ones I really like, which ones have effects that I can take further. And then I'm going to put them into um, a sketchbook or a studio journal, which I shall develop into a texture sketchbook, which I can refer back to when I need to. If you're interested in learning to create texture and to keep a record of it and creating your own texture sketchbook, I shall leave a link to um, a Patreon workshop that I did exploring texture and creating my own texture sketchbook. Um, there's a few of the panels from it here and I think it's a really great idea to explore texture um, to bring into your landscape painting. So please follow the link below um, to my Patreon site if you're interested. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I shall probably film 
a second part to this at some point where I show you my um, new texture sketchbook that I'll be making up out of these studies and show you any other associated explorations that I um, that I've pre that I produce in the future because once I stop filming now I shall go back into the studio and carry on with these explorations with a view to trying to get some of these effects into my larger paintings. So thank you so much. Um, please um, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. And don't forget, you can support Morgana and myself on Patreon. Our links are in the description below and we'd love to see you there. Take care and happy painting. Bye.